Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Animaction, and welcome to the first video in a series that I'm going to be simply calling the Animated 80s. Yeah, it's a bit much. In this series of videos, I'm going to be taking a look at each year throughout the decade to see what that year had to offer for cartoons. That's all animation, not just action specifically. We'll definitely be spending time on the action series from each year, but for this one, or I guess 10, we're just going to be celebrating the 80s and cartoons as a whole. I'll be running down every show that was on the air each year, what new shows debuted each year, what major themes we saw and the types of programming and, you know, things like that. Not only are we going to discuss them, but I'll also cover where and how to watch each of these shows as of May 2023. No promises for future viewers. And finally, once I've made it through the entire decade, I'll be ranking each year by viewing quality in the culminating video of the series. Also, after I cover each year, be on the lookout for a companion video in which I'm going to collect all of the intros from each series covered in that video. I hope this idea appeals to everyone and that you're all looking as forward to looking back as I am. So without further ado, let's start where the 80s start. You know, 1980. So I'd like to begin with a disclaimer by reiterating something I said in my Top 10 Mobile Bases video during the Argo entry. I'm not quite old enough to have real first-hand knowledge of 1980. I mean, I was alive in 1980, but I was one for three quarters of the year, so not a lot of clear memories from that one. However, I do have memories of several of these shows and reruns, and as I have a couple of brothers who are 9 and 13 years older than me respectively, I have the benefit of watching several of these shows at a much younger age than I maybe should have. That being said, one of the hallmarks of being a doctor, doctor like I'm a real doctor, no seriously doctor, as far as you know doctor, 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 is the ability to research, doctor, doctor, and that's what I've done. Doctor, doctor. What I found was that in 1980, kids had a fairly limited 23 cartoons to choose from throughout the year. These shows were primarily split between Hanna-Barbera and Filmation-produced shows, and primarily leaned toward a variety hour slash shorts style of program. Out of the 23, Tarzan and the Super 7, The New Adventures of Mighty Mouse and Heckle and Jekyll, The Tom and Jerry Comedy Show, Heathcliff and Dingbat, The Plastic Man Comedy Adventure Show, The Flintstone Comedy Show, The Richie Rich Scooby-Doo Show, The Bugs Bunny and Roadrunner Show, The All-New Popeye Hour, and Hanna-Barbera's World of Super Adventure were all made up of shorter 7 to 11 minute segments of various other shows. Mostly they came with what was on the label, with a few exceptions. The new adventures of Mighty Mouse and Heckle and Jekyll included shorts of not only the title characters, but also episodes of Quackula, and ran five mini-episodes in each hour-long episode. The Flintstones comedy show brought in some interesting new characters and a Stone Age take on the Addams Family called the Frankenstones and ran for 90 minutes per episode in 1980, splitting that time between its seven short stories. The Plastic Man comedy adventure show didn't just have multiple versions of Plastic Man stories, including one with a baby but also included minis of Mighty Man and Yuck, Fang Face, and Rickety Rocket. Lastly, amongst these anthology shows, Tarzan and the Super 7 included a bunch of new superhero shorts like Super Stretch and Micro Woman, Manta and Moray, The Freedom Force, Web Woman, and even a live-action segment called Jason of Star Command. Also worthy of mention here is that Hanna-Barbera's World of Super Adventure was also a pretty varied anthology, but all of the shows it was comprised of, including Birdman and the Galaxy Trio, Space Ghost and Dino Boy, The Herculoids, Frankenstein Jr. and the Impossibles, Shazam, Fantastic Four, and Moby Dick and the Mighty Mitor, were all just repackages of those shows' original runs from the late 60s. And of the rest, Fred and Barney Meet the Shmoo and the Tarzan Lone Ranger Adventure Hour took the theater format of running double features, or multiple shows under a single banner. Fred and Barney Meet the Shmoo ran for 90 minutes and consisted of a full-length episode of the new Fred and Barney Adventure Show, a full-length episode of the new Shmoo, and a mini 11-minute episode of The Thing. And finally, the Tarzan Lone Ranger Adventure Hour ran for, well, an hour. You can probably guess which two shows it consisted of. Now each of those formats is kind of a throwback to previous eras of programming, where variety shows and sketch shows were popular and theaters always ran double bills. It's almost as if cartoons in the 80s were made by people who grew up in the 60s. Weird. It's probably also obvious based on the properties that most of these series I just mentioned are made up of. Mighty Mouse, Heckle and Jekyll, Shmoo, Tom and Jerry, Popeye, Tarzan, Lone Ranger, Flash Gordon, who I haven't actually mentioned yet, they'd all been around since the 40s or earlier. The Flintstones, Richie Rich, Scooby-Doo, Plastic Man, most of the Super Friends characters, who I also haven't mentioned yet, 
and all the characters from Hanna-Barbera's World of Super Adventure were from the 50s and 60s. The Fonz and the Happy Days Gang is based on a show from the mid-70s. Captain Caveman was a carryover from a show that started in 1977 that copied and pasted the Scooby-Doo format. Fat Albert had already been on the air since 1972. And the Drac Pack was a new concept, but based again on characters from the 1800s. You know, like the Universal Monsters. In most regards, this was not really a year of trying new things for a new decade. So what's that leave, really? Let's take a look. Well, we had a couple of new concepts, like Sport Billy and Thundar the Barbarian. Unfortunately, it's hard to consider Sport Billy a new concept when it's based on a German comic book from the 50s. And the originality of Thundar, well, that may have some earlier roots too. Which means we're quickly running out of shows to look at to give us something new and interesting to usher the 80s in. Something like Super 7 introduced several new mini-cartoons with Freedom Force, Web Woman, Manta and Moray, and Super Stretch and Micro Woman, but they were more superheroes that weren't very different from what Marvel and DC were already offering. <laughs> Essentially, it's down to anime to save the day, with Battle of the Planets, Star Blazers, and Force 5. And before you say anything, I know that each of these was adapted from a 1970s Japanese production, but they were new and important in a very specific way. They opened the door for Japanese animation in America. Yeah, I know they weren't the first instances of Japanese animation in the U.S., because shows like Speed Racer and Gigantor came out well before them, but I'd argue that they were the first cartoons in the States that brought the Japanese anime formula of ongoing stories, recurring characters, and through plots, and perfect heroes, and larger, equally important casts. That's what I feel was the most important benchmark of 1980 in animation, the introduction of true anime style, and the birth of the action cartoon as I define it on this channel. Teams of specialists with unique capabilities fighting similarly equipped and empowered enemies in unique and interesting environments. And following that reasoning, I have both 1980 and Japanese cartoons to thank for this channel. Before teams like G-Force and the crew of the Argo hit US airwaves, the only teams we saw were superheroes on shows like Super Friends. Older cartoons or kid shows focused more on a single hero like Lone Ranger, Zoro, Tarzan, maybe with a sidekick if kids were lucky. These 1980 shows also introduced higher stakes and darker storylines that would dominate the 80s and make cartoons, though still for children, for more world-savvy and technologically-minded kids of that decade. I once heard someone describe 80s kids as having boomer sensibilities and millennial capabilities because we grew up in the fastest-evolving, advancing decade potentially in human history. We all started the decade with rotary phones and 13-channel TVs and ended the decade with cordless digital phones, 100-channel remote-capable TVs, Nintendos, and personal computers. And I'd argue that these were the cartoons that saw those changes coming, and predicted the kids who were maturing as fast as the world evolved would be looking for an entertainment. So, was 1980 the most diverse and exciting year for cartoons in the decade? Probably not. Stay tuned for my ranking to find out for sure. But was it an important year? Absolutely. As you'll see in the next couple of videos, it took a couple years for this promising start to really get traction. But once it did, man, the decade was off and running. But that brings us now to one of the most painful topics I'll be covering throughout this series. Specifically, the preservation of these shows and how we nostalgic old folk can rewatch them and introduce these wonderful shows to new generation. Unfortunately, there are going to be way more of these throughout the video series that don't have an official high quality way for people to watch them that I like, but I'll be doing my best to point you all toward the ones that do. For 1980, thanks mostly to Hanna-Barbera's efforts to release all of their properties on DVD, several of these series are available to buy including Captain Caveman and the Teen Angels, Heathcliff and Dingbat, The Fonz and the Happy Days Gang, The Richie Rich Scooby-Doo Show, Thundar the Barbarian, Tarzan Lord of the Jungle, and Star Blazers. Plus, all of the original series from the 60s that make up Hanna-Barbera's World of Super Adventure, except for the Fantastic Four, are also available on in-print DVDs. Some of the other shows out there are easily available either for free or to purchase digitally on Prime Video or other subscription services, specifically the new Fred and Barney show, Tom and Jerry comedy show, the Plastic Man comedy adventure show, New Adventures of Flash Gordon, and Super Friends. But that's about it. Everything else from this year is only available on expensive, hard-to-find, out-of-print DVDs, bootlegs, or possibly here on YouTube. So if you're looking for Battle of the Planets, Super 7, the new Shmoo, New Adventures of Mighty Mouse and Heckle and Jekyll, or Force 5, be prepared to shell out some cash, sacrifice some quality, or cross your fingers and wait. So that's my look at and analysis of 1980. Did you guys enjoy the video, or would you rather I stick to top 10s? Are you interested in seeing where the decade goes from here? Because based on the research I've done for this series, I certainly am. How many of you remember these shows, either firsthand or through reruns? Share your thoughts and memories from this year and the shows down below so we can all reminisce together. 
Also, for a bonus burst of nostalgia, make sure that after this video you watch the 80s intro compilation. I hope you all enjoyed the video and the trip down animated memory lane. If you did, leave a like to let me know. If you didn't, leave a comment to let me know that too. Not a dislike, because those don't come with any criticism I can use to grow from. Anyway, that's it for today, and for 1980. I'll see you all in 1981. Stay tuned, and stay tuned. As in cartoons. Later.